Hi everybody, it's me, Ivy, aka the main protagonist, still reeling after that finale to Doctor Who Flux. I have quite a lot to get through today. First, I'm going to talk about the sixth episode, The Vanquishers, and my thoughts on it. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about Flux as a whole. Really quick, I just want to give a shout out to the creators and the crew, the cast, everyone involved in Doctor Who Flux who worked so hard to create this season during COVID, during such an unprecedented, confusing time. It could not have been easy, and I am so thankful that they still pulled through and still put in the work so that we could have this season. Now, on to my thoughts on episode 6. First of all, I want to give a shout out to the beginning where it transferred from the um, previously into the now segment. Just that smooth transition, that little continuation of the scene really reminded me of classic Doctor Who, how they kind of start with the previously and then smoothly transition. Like I just thought that was so funky, I loved it. Shout out to Thasmin, we finally got a Doctor and Yaz hug. A win for the gays, even if they're not confirmed gay, it was still a win for the gays, we finally got it. They've only known each other for what, like, literal years? And they're supposed to be like best friends and doctor and companion, and it's like the first time they've ever hugged, technically. Also, I really liked learning about Williamson and his tunnels really briefly. Um, I talked a little bit about this with Mary Seacole. I don't know a ton of history, particularly British history, so I always love learning about that from Doctor Who. So that was a cool highlight of this episode for me, but it was a very brief highlight. One thing I noticed was that there was a lot of cuts. Like, there was a lot of editing cuts in some scenes, particularly when the Doctor was talking. Now, I think this was more a stylistic choice because the Doctor was kind of torn between three different places, so you could argue that they were kind of trying to reflect that confusing, kind of um, unstable kind of position she was in, but it was still really confusing on the eyes and just kind of really took me out for a second there. Also, I just, I have to laugh because I started out with a notebook then I went to a notepad and now I just have a single sheet of paper. <laughs> I feel like I can't get through this video without being honest. Um, I talked about this on Twitter. I lost focus for such a giant portion of this episode because they had the 13th Doctor flirt with herself. And I was just like, oh, it's so good. My heart was beating so fast. I could not focus, I could not think. I need a girlfriend so bad. <laughs> I need a girlfriend so bad. I have, I have written down, <laughs> shout out to self -sessed. So that takes me out of the mood. That gets me more focused a little bit. Also, I have written down, I, <laughs> the doctor saying, and I quote, there's too many questions. I thought that was so on the nose. That was so, like, that captures the feeling of Flux as a series so perfectly that I just kind of had to laugh. I'm sorry. Belle and Vinder reuniting. These guys, you know, I just, you have to wonder why they're involved in the plot. Um, just kind of why they were there, but at the same time, I really enjoyed their small little subplot, their love story, and just seeing them reunite. It was nice to have that little happiness, and I just love love, so I'll let the kind of confusing presence of them, I'll let that slide, because I love love. Now is where things turn a little bit more negative for me. Um, really this entire half of the paper is negative. Um, so yeah, I apologize for that. While I was surfing Twitter, reading all of your guys' thoughts, I came upon a tweet um, that I, I knew that this problem existed, but I didn't know how to word it until I saw this tweet, and it just clicked that, like, yes, this is the problem. This comes from... <laughs> this comes from at Spanky Backpack. Uh, love your username, by the way who says 90% of Chris Chibnall's Doctor Who is Jodie Whittaker standing on the spot, breathlessly explaining the plot. And yes, that is my biggest problem with this whole era. But this episode and this season specifically, it feels like Jodie Whittaker is like a one woman show, just kind of explaining everything to the other characters. And so it doesn't really feel like the characters are involved as much. It doesn't feel like they're learning as much. It's just her. and. It just, uh, it almost feels like you're just listening to an audiobook, but the audiobook isn't really that descriptive. It's just, here are the plot points that happen. And then 
just how everything got wrapped up I really didn't vibe with um namely the departure of Swarm and Azur they I mean they were just gone just like that and you guys know I loved these guys I loved them in the first few episodes they were so menacing they were so evil they were so wonderfully performed and then they just they were just so underused they were so underused and then they were just gone just like that and it felt like so much more could have been done with them. Not to mention the other villains in this episode, like the Santarans, the Grand Serpent, for example. I talked about how he felt kind of pointless last episode, and that unfortunately did not improve. Really, everything just felt so pointless. <laughs> it just felt like this should have been such a bigger finale. There should have been so much more happening. We got so much teased. We had so many great villains. We had Swarm and Azur. The Grand Serpent seemed really cool. Santarans, Daleks, Cybermen. Daleks, Santarans, Cybermen. We had the Doctor's memories being teased. And of course, it's all too much. Like I said in my last review, that it just all falls flat. It's like a tower of cards. If you put too many cards or too many things in one tower, it just collapses. And that is definitely what happened here. So yes, overall, very disappointed in the episode. Babes, it's 5 a.m. I'm tired, but I just thought of something else I want. Oh, sorry, hang on. Oh, I feel like else I wanted to say. So they never really answer in flux, like whether or not the universe is still destroyed. And I feel like that's so awkward. Like, so is like the trillions of people still die? Like, it's so much of the universe still die. And the doctor's just kind of like, well, problem solved. And it's like, well, no. Um, I think like the majority of the universe is still dead. Um, like, I really just think that they should have cleared that up. And I'm gonna go back to sleep now. Okay. So, because I don't want this video to be too long, we're going to go ahead and play my reaction to the final few minutes of the episode, and then I'll discuss my thoughts on Flux as a whole. Okay everyone, let's go reaction to the final episode of Flux. I have no idea how this is gonna end. Not really positive. I like this, I like this, I just like, where are Swarm and Azur? Where are they? Oh, Jericho, no! <gasps> oh, stop, that hurts so bad because now I'm thinking about uh, IV editing here. I was having a bit of a breakdown, but what I was talking about was Katie Manning's tweets. I, I love her Twitter account, and I love the sentiment that she always posts um, about people who have sadly passed away going on their awfully big adventure. And so that's why that moment was really touching for me and just really emotional for me. So yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. Love you guys. <sighs> no, that hurts so bad because it just... This kind of just feels like they're redoing the plot from, um, from Revolution of the Daleks. Like, this just feels like the same thing. Because <laughs> they put all the, like, all the threads inside of the passenger, just like they put all the threads inside of the TARDIS. Okay, so while this shit is happening, um, oh, what? So they're just gone, like that. And their the forces that pass against you. And their master. <gasps> what do you mean? And What do you mean their master? I restore you. What do you mean their master? Okay, okay, okay. That was a little gay. A little prolonged little stare there. Not to spoil anything, but I may have a small collab in place with some very great people to discuss Flux as a whole, so I'm going to keep my thoughts very brief so that I can save um, some more in-depth stuff for that conversation. My overall very brief thought about Flux is that the individual episodes were pretty strong and very enjoyable, but as an overarching long story, it's just not good. <laughs> 
I just really feel like there were too many plots, too many ideas, too many things going full speed, and as a result, they all fell flat. And the story, just as a collective, does not work very well. I really wish that we had gotten a stronger finale and just a stronger story as a whole because each of the individual components of Flux really had a lot of potential. I do think, however, that this series was still very ambitious and I do admire that. I admire the idea of turning to a serial format and I really admire all of the actors, all of the crew, um, everyone involved that brought this together still. Um, like I said in my earlier speech, um, this couldn't have been easy to produce with COVID and I'm just, I, I am so grateful that they pulled through and did this for us regardless of how it turned out. I especially want to give a shout out to Jody Whittaker and Mandy Gill who did so well this season. Their acting was great. I really enjoyed watching them and I also really enjoyed the inclusion of John Bishop. I think he did so great as Dan. And yes, so I, I am feeling very thankful even if I didn't like enjoy the finale and everything. <laughs> I am still likely going to give this series a rewatch sometime in the future. Particularly, I think it'd be great to do a rewatch of every single episode one after the other just so I can truly see it as a collective story. And who knows, my opinion might change. I want to know what you guys thought not only about the Vanquishers but about the whole Flux series as a whole. Were you satisfied by the ending or like me were you kind of uh were you kind of sad about wasted potential? I always love chatting with you guys so if you want to talk really quick you can leave a comment below. You can also leave a like below if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 300 by the end of the year. I've got some great stuff planned for the future. I did determine today that I might do a video asking the question is the Hesman queerbait? So if you want to see that, stick around, stay for the ride. But if you are just here for Flux, or even if you're just stopping by to see this video, thank you so much. I hope that you're all staying safe, happy, and healthy. And most importantly, I hope you have a great day, night, or whatever time it is for you. Thank you so much for joining me, and goodbye.